All right. The time has come. to introduce your final project. So, everything we've done this semester, I have recorded a demonstration of. Every exercise, every assignment. I am not going to be demonstrating how to do your final project because this is what's completely individual to you and you're developing your own idea and your own techniques individually but i am recording this to help introduce it so we just finished digital painting before that we did type design and poster layout before that we did uh, spot illustrations behind vector line art that was colored before that we did vectors before that we did animating before that we did compositing in various ways with landscapes and creatures all of those skills can be combined or utilized to make this last project and this last project the theme is posters against censorship celebrating freedom of expression so i have some examples here some of them are photographic composites this is making a, a an old ballot box look like it's wired to explode. Here we have one that uses vector graphics to make someone being muzzled by a stripe on the American flag. Here we have one that uses composite photography. Here we have one that's pretty much straightforward uh, illustration using kind of basic coloring and using a lot of text. So many examples. I give you a definition of censorship here. It's a suppression or prohibition of any parts of books, films, news, etc., that are considered obscene, politically unacceptable, or a threat to security. And it comes from the, the Latin in ancient Rome to censor. There was an actual position of someone as a censorship authority. So who gets to say what's acceptable speech and what isn't, right? And then I have a past student example from Gerson Navarro that he has allowed for us to use. And this was during the pandemic, you know, during the remote sessions. I'll be using this to kind of show the ideation that goes behind it, how you work through this process for your final project. And this was his final, he called it Karen versus the Masks of Tyranny. He had an artist statement that goes with it, and this is the image, right, which is playing with, with different memes and different online cultural references. Thinking about, is this mask oppressing me, right, like the butterfly meme. So here under our final art project, you have just a one-page assignment sheet. And that assignment sheet just tells you, you will select a short phrase or sentence out of context from a text selected by your instructor. Instead of that this semester, instead of me giving you a phrase to respond to, I just want you to re respond to that idea of posters against censorship. You can title it whatever you want. You can interpret that in any way you want, but that has to be the driving concept behind your, your digital artwork. And you can interpret poster very broadly. You are also, as, a, as in addition to creating your own original digital artwork in a style and technique that's your own, you're also going to write and turn in a one-page description or artist statement of your project. It should not be more than a page. It does not need to fill up the page. So we'll see some examples of that. And this project will not be graded by me as all our other assignments, but rather it will be graded by a full class critique out of 10 points based on the quality of the idea, the quality of the execution, the amount of effort you put in, and whether your fellow students think it has pizzazz or not, as printed and presented in class. Now, if it's an animation or if it's a video project, you want to think how to present it in class so it still has pizzazz, even if it can't be printed. 
And the whole point is that you get to showcase all of your problem solving skills and your demonstrate your knowledge that you've learned through the semester about how to use these tools towards communicating. So I have lots of examples. This is a friend of mine who does uh, movie poster design now, Kiko Sternberger. And this is her concept pro process because this isn't magic. Everyone goes through certain steps to get to a finished design. And so this was for the Spike Lee film on Netflix, The Five Bloods, which she did the poster for. This was how she started. These are the, the references and the visual inspirations she used and then did her own versions of. This was kind of the idea she was most drawn to. And so she, she built it up, painted it digitally, made it creased so it looks like an old poster and did this as a vector type design. And you can read about her process in her own words there. I have other examples. And sometimes it's really hard to get started on a project that's as open-ended as this. So these are some tools I sometimes use. This, these are like random thought generators, random phrases. This is the inspiration bot, which creates little inspirational memes just through AI. Get angry at animal husbandry. Talk about self-delusion. So just regenerating these, trying different ones, that might start you on an idea that you relate to censorship, right? Already this human interaction is a kind of restriction. And you have this kind of image of this mouth being pushed through a hole in paper is what it looks like to me. Already this might start your mind thinking about types of censorship. Maybe like, a poster full of little holes with different mouths trying to get their message out, but some are amplified and some are, are sewed over. Lots of things. Don't be embarrassed about your nuts. Little things, right? So that's just a way I get my, my ideas flowing. And then this is another one. This is a fortune cookie Twitter account that analyzed a thousand fortune cookies and generates every day sometimes more than once a day. It was doing it, I think, every 10 minutes when it first came out. It just puts out a new fortune cookie. So this is the most, this is an hour ago. Education is the unit of the organic body, so the family is the frosting. Question. Work with the flow will make you happy. So that starts to talk to me about censorship, right? Like going with the flow, but what will make you happy? But then you question that. And then it's, makes me think of the phrase by Utah Phillips, this, this folk collector of stories. And he said, um, following the path of least resistance is what makes the river crooked. And so you can just pay attention to your associations. So these tools can help. So randomness is a good place to start on I generating your ideas. Okay, we're going to follow this, the concept project workflow for this project. And so the first thing we need to do is establish what your problem is. What are you actually trying to solve? So this is how I want you to do that. It's going to be through a proving ground, our last proving ground for the semester. These four proving grounds, if you do them all and you get full points on all of them, then you will earn a creative problem solving badge by the end. And no more so is that going to be shown than in this project where you're coming up with your own approach to this concept of a, of a poster against censorship. So right here, proving ground number four, this is where you're going to learn the process, just like I showed you with Akiko, and where you're going to post your sketches. So this is all about systemat systematically testing ideas. To generate the best original idea possible in support of your final concept, right? Your final concept has to do something about celebrating or um, it being against censorship and celebrating kind of freedom of expression. You are going to generate a clear statement summary. That is gonna be your problem. 
the thing that you are trying to do, you are going to sketch and post at least three rough thumbnail concept solutions for that clear statement summary, which is just a sentence. And then you're also going to participate in individual process critiques with me next class. And from those critiques, create and post a refined sketch and a working title all before you start working on your finished project, right? So we're, we're running through these. So step one, defining your problem. You need to write a one sentence statement summary to summarize your idea. If you follow this link, it will just tell you how to write a one sentence synopsis about anything. How to simplify it down to one sentence. So I have an example. This is using uh, Gersom's work that I showed you before. So Gersom's one sentence was, I will use the familiar imagery of memes and cancel culture to satirize our society's needs to politicize every bleeping thing, no matter how obvious or important. So there's some emotion in there. And it would be great if your final project can channel some of your own opinions, some of your own interests, some of your own values. This was during the pandemic, during the shutdown, a lot of frustration is, is evident in this, right? Especially for his, for his work, like people acting the way people do, you know, the mess that is social interaction online, even during something as important as a pandemic and public health. Once he has that, and you can edit that as you go, but once you have that clear intention, then you can start brainstorming. And I call brainstorming acknowledging the cliches. People think brainstorming is all about unlocking your creativity. Really, all brainstorming is, is it's creating the box that you're working within and maybe pushing outside of. So acknowledging the cliches is what is the most basic, straightforward, visual way I can communicate my intention. And sometimes your intentions are pretty, pretty complicated. You know, this one has to do with memes and cancel culture. There's no like clip art way to do that. So he simply identified the memes he was most thinking of when he was thinking of that intention. So he was thinking about all the memes that were going on around Karens that were you know, behaving badly online. Uh, there's something called the butterfly meme, which I got introduced to through this. Um, and then he was personally dealing with like COVID deniers and anti-maskers and mis misinformation and like all the things written about how 5G is going to activate a, a chip in the vaccines and just all this stuff that's out there, right? That he was immersed in. Taking that, brainstorming is not just, you know, writing and acknowledging what's already out there, but it's doing three thumbnail sketches. Definition of thumbnail sketches, a good little article about why it's important, <laughs> no matter what your, your visual career is. This is for a concept artist. You want to be able to try out ideas quickly. And you want to be able to fail quickly and be able to recognize what's important. So with his thumbnail sketches, you have to do at least three. I would recommend five. You have to do this before we meet on Monday. He came up with one that was art historical. He was also in my art history class at the time. He did one that plays with I can has cheeseburger, like one of the, the very early internet memes. And then the cat says, I can has COVID if I want. And he's like shredding a mask, it's pretty funny. And then he has the butterfly meme one, which is what he ended up going with, what we thought was strongest, but he had to change it from here. And it's a parody with a man in a manga hat seeing a floating face mask and asking, is this socialism while holding a book titled Common Sense, right? Once you have made your sketches and you have your initial statement summary for what you want your idea to convey, then you're gonna come to class and you are ready to have your first process critique with me. And with the first process critique, I'm gonna challenge you to really identify your references, right? And what you wanna to bring together towards your best sketch. So he took this butterfly meme, he took this Karen,